let's take apart the black version because I like the white one. Let's uh, see what it weighs. Uh, box reckons 64 grams. So. So this is the box. You can see you got Kel Go optical switches. Definitely decent. Do something, but it says a 400 milliamp hour battery. Okay. But if you look at the base, and maybe this is me not reading it right. So I could be wrong here. What it says, you see there? 500, five, five volt, 250 milliamp. So maybe that's why it's lighter. Maybe this is lighter. Maybe they took put a smaller battery in it to drop the weight than the original boxing was. What do you reckon? Not necessarily a problem, but people might go, oh great, yeah, 410 milliamp battery. We'll find out when we open it, I guess. Part of the reason why we open them. Now the fun part. Let's rip this thing to pieces. I mean, professionally take it apart. So the skates, well, you'd be happy to know the rounded pleasure, decent thickness. So first two screws. Three grams worth of uh, skates, though, I think, pretty much. Oh man, this stuff is sticky, man. Sticky. <laughs> Four screws. Got the label actually to get off, but. One, two, three, four. No clips at the front there. No holes. It's a holeless mouse at the minute. I'll do this pen off. Maybe to align it. Ideas. There's definitely some adhesive being used. All right, so 60, what is it, 62 grams solid base. So we're looking at super lightweight. Probably no, no holage. Standard screw, just a normal uh, Philips. Teal Kale, nice, Logi Vibe scroll configuration. Yeah, Kale Blues in the side as well, nice, Kale 2s. Some, some nice switch switches. You know what the first thing I think this is? It's the first mouse I think it's had both Kale. Might be a different Kale, but all Kale, isn't it? Finally, I mean, this. we've got a mouse that actually keeps similar switches. Congrats. A bit of a weird position for the battery, it's like slightly offset to the right, maybe to count with the side buttons I'm guessing. Maybe not that weird. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. The only thing I'd say is perhaps move it back unless you want it directly over the sensor, which it kind of is. No change in screwdriver type. That's a winner straight off the bat. Side button configuration looks pretty standard.
He's on a nice switch. The KL2 is probably one that I like, but I don't really talk about. It's a nice switch. Because I prefer the KL Red, but. Nicely optimized PCB. And what else we got? Two screws on the actual main buttons as well. One, two. Nice. That was a bit of wibble. You got two screws and a peg at the back. Oh, stop it moving. One of the things we noticed on the um, before we chopped it up, this is by the way, on the uh, HSK Pro. This has got really thin buttons. Um, they are quite thin still, but obviously felt nice when we were clicking it, so no complaints. Feels like there they are, really like them for buttons. Even the size of them, it feels light, man. Right, <laughs> it feels lighter than that. Thinned out quite a bit. A gram, north. All right, now we've got the encoder. This is what it looks like here, built into it. So it's giving me the uh, bit of a razor, razor vibe the encoder. TTC white. Oh, looks a bit gritty. Get it slightly aggressive. Well, I know there's not many encoders in this variety, the smaller version. So maybe that limits the encoders you can have if you want to change it, or you're actually making it. Looks like a normal 1.5 mil JST. Then, oh yeah, because the uh, optimized like spindles and stuff looks like a car wheel. This thing Could took a little bit of weight out on the inside, which G Wolves have been doing. But not bad. So we've got the same kind of style um, front bumper, I call it, as the XM1 had originally. Quite a bit of plastic at the front here, but maybe to reinforce it. You can see why we can, uh, I think we can get some, uh, some weight out of this later on. That's what the uh, PCB looks like. Stock connector on the uh, 1.5 mil, so it should be a straight swap. Let's have a look. Yep. So this is 200 milliamp from Ali. You can get looks pretty much yeah identical sizing. So it should be easy enough to change if you were to put a light battery in it, which we will do later. Well, get in. Yep. <laughs> These battery holders. Well, this one's pretty nicely trimmed out. It's not got a lot of weight on it, so. Yep. Yeah. So 410 milliamp, 3.5 volt. Oh, it's like 3.7 volt. Yep. Yeah. 
8 grams. No, no, got a little clip under the uh, little clip on the front against the KF2. And this is probably the lightest battery holder we've seen. Now looking at a nice optimized PCB. So it looks like it's got one screw left here. PCB, maybe people will start using this for some mods. <clears throat> oh, so PCB, well, we've got the Optomex and the Kale, nice. Looks a very well optimized PCB, of course. These traces are, this is tight, man. Beautiful. Got the weeny tiniest mode button, look at that. Mini button. So I'll cut the PCB here. We've got the same, maybe a similar setup to the Razer Optomax where they're kind of clipped in. See that? Right, let's check the size. People want to mod it into something. Depending on what the price is. Pretty nice PCB there. Nice and easy to fit into something if you wanted. Like a point eight. Yep. Mode button and the power switch. So the old triangle is trying to cut out some of the weight. The heaviest bit seems to be the shell, but I guess that's why you're trying to keep it feeling a bit more solid. And the base is pretty thick to be fair for today's standards. Nice. There we have it, the Endgame Gear XM2WE taken apart.